Good morning. Um, as James said, my name is Andrew Elliott um, from IPCO. I'm IPCO's employee development manager. I look after a lot of the training that we do within IPCO. Um, IPCO has been around for over 60 years. Um, started with a few um, individuals um, operating a small machine shop in their back garden in the middle of South End. Uh, and now it's a global business with over um, seven, seven or eight hundred employees worldwide. Um, still owned by the same family that um, uh, founded the company 60 plus years ago. Um, now run by our chief executive, who's the grandson of the, 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 the gentleman that founded the company back then. So what is IPCO's business? Um, IPCO's primary business activities um, are aircraft crew seating, so um, pilot, co-pilot observer seats in the cockpit of an aircraft. Um, we also have our executive passenger seating. So these are the passenger seats that go in your private jets, so your business owners that fly around the world on business. Um, basically, that leather armchairs to keep them comfortable as they fly around doing their necessary deals. Uh, we also have our galley inserts. So these are the food and drink preparation appliances that you'll find in the galley area of an aircraft. And we'll come back to some of the products in a bit more detail in a second. So I said IPCO is now a global organisation. Our main headquarters is, is in Southend, um, just next to Southend Airport. Um, mainly historically, mainly based in Aviation Way that runs alongside the airport site. Um, Eighty percent of our workforce is based in that in that site overall. As you'll see in a minute, there's some, been some recent developments with our facilities, and um, I'll, I'll fill you in a, a little bit later in the presentation. We also have a, a big presence presence in the in in America, so. Um, we have big facilities in Los Angeles and in Wichita. Uh, these generally provide some manufacturing, but mainly repair and spares distribution services. We also have a number of sites that are based next door to um, aircraft manufacturers final assembly lines. So the, the plants where our seats would be installed in the aircraft, so we would have a facility next door so that should there be any problems, we have people on site to, to help out. So these are largely based in Seattle to support Boeing and Montreal to support Bombardier. And then we have um, service centres um, dotted around the world. Um, these provide repair services and spares distribution. Um, so the likes of Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, India, um, all sorts of various places around the world and an ever growing list of, of those um, little satellite offices. But let's have a little look at a little more detail of the, the products that we produce. So these are our pilot um, seating um, lines. So any seat that goes in the cockpit of the aircraft would come under our crew seating division. Um, there are numbers of models of seats. Every aircraft has a different design, interfaces with the aircraft differently, has a different space in which it has to operate and different constraints placed upon it. Here are just a few of the models, but the number of models is beyond my, I've lost count basically. I've been with IPCO for 22 years and um, I've lost count of the number of models that I've seen go through the business. All different, all varying, um, but all fundamentally um, meeting the same criteria. They have to be light, they have to be safe, and they have to be comfortable. As you can see, these are some of the customers that we supply the crew seating to, um, Boeing being our biggest customer. So um, normally I have a little, you know, um, anecdote about you going on holiday on an aircraft and having flown on a Boeing aircraft, your pilot would have been relying on our products for their comfort and ultimately your safety. Unfortunately, because we're not really allowed on holidays properly at the moment, it's probably a little bit out of date. But once you are able to get out there, you'd be able to you know, fly on a Boeing aircraft and you can be assured that it's one of our products in the cockpit. 
Uh, the third seat on the slide, the black one, is um, a pilot seat for a Honda jet aircraft. So these are private executive jets. Um, so the, this seat is quite a bit smaller, quite a lot, lot more stylish, um, purely because it's on that private jet rather than the commercial aircraft. The one on the right hand side of the slide is slightly different. This is um, our high comfort attendant seat that we're currently in the latter stages of developing. Um, so we've gone to market and we've designed a similar product. It's not identical for each aircraft, but it's similar that will go on um, Embraer aircraft, it will go on Boeing aircraft, and it will go on Airbus aircraft. So this it folds out and effectively provides some kind of comfortable um, seating and resting um, seating for um, for your flight attendants. Um, so fairly new venture for us. Um, quite exciting. The number of seats that that potentially puts for our business is quite high um, once the market recovers from where it is today. That's the cruise seating as it is, but we're always looking to develop our products. So we have a very large engineering design um, department and they're constantly looking at ways we can improve the products, bring in new functionality, new levels of comfort, in, improve the weight saving technologies that we use on our products to ensure that we're minimizing the impact of the weight of our products on the aircraft. In order to ensure all of these things meet the requirements of our industry, we have our own in-house test facility. So whether it be how often an arm rest will go up and down before snapping, or whether it will be how does our product respond in an aircraft crash, these things we all test in-house. So we have an extensive facility, but the most um, interesting from my point of view is that we can simulate an aircraft crash in our own facility. So we send um, one of our seats down a, a, a sled um, at a certain speed and then stop it very suddenly simulating 8, 16, 32 Gs of force through that seat. We see how it responds and then we can make the design improvements to ensure that it's strong enough to withstand those kind of impacts. Because of all of this work that goes on in the background, we, we like to think that our products are the most comfortable and reliable seats on the market. Then we move on to the executive jet passenger seating, um, another one of our key areas of business and a very much a growing uh, marketplace for us. And one of the markets that's picking up very quickly after COVID, um, much quicker than the commercial aircraft business. At the moment, we supply our executive seats to Bombardier and Cessna and amongst others, but they're the two main um, customers. Um, but there are more customers coming online soon. Obviously, I can't tell you too much about that, but watch this space. So here we have an example of our seats in a Bombardier Challenger private jet. Um, these seats are very customed, customized to the, the airline owner. So every aircraft has its own owner that feeds their requirements into the company that manufacture the aircraft. They then feed us the demand to provide them the seats that match the, the schemes that the customer has required. So these seats have got the very light cream leather with dark um, side panels, um, fairly plain sort of um, plating on there, but we go from black and red with gold plating to all sorts of different colours and styles. They're a classy product and they look really good. Um, as I say, this is the Challenger aircraft. We now have a contract to supply these seats to all of Bombardier's private jets, not just the Challenger programme. And so we're working very heavily, as you'll see in a second, on developing a new product that is um, better suited for the mass production market. We get very short lead time on this. This is a challenging program for us. We get told about 100 days before we're due to deliver the seat exactly what specification it has to meet. Um, and therefore, this program is quite a demanding program on our business. But again, these seats, you know, they always need developing further. And so we took to market a um, concept of a new product one that was easier to manufacture, 
one that was more comfortable, more functional, um, introducing this concept of maximum comfort. So as you see in the top right hand corner of that image, a zero G concept so that this seat will stow in a certain position for different phases of the flight. But that zero G is to minimize the forces and the impacts of the flight upon the occupant, making your rich businessmen even more comfortable as they fly around the world. Something we've been working very hard on. And as you can see from here, the picture on the right is the uh, is a prototype um, that was completed. And as you can see, it looks very smart, very stylish, a little bit more compact and much easier to manufacture manufacture than the, the previous models. OK, so we move on to our galley inserts. As we said at the, at the beginning, this is the food and drink preparation uh, facilities for an aircraft. So microwaves, fridges, freezers, ovens, um, beverage makers. Um, we even have a cooktop there that we're developing that would enable fresh food to be prepared in flight. And we have a division in Germany that's currently working on providing a dishwasher to go into an aircraft. So we, we make the mess and we clear it up afterwards. Again, these, this section of the business has lots of new products coming to market at the moment. Um, and I'm sure at some point, if you're interested, we can show you more detail. We also have our precision engineering department. They focus on very specialist um, solutions for military uh, industries. Um, our, our main um, capability there that's different from many other places is we have a salt bath brazing facility where you heat a tank of salt up to some ridiculously high temperature. You dip your, your assembly into it, it melds it together and enables us to have a very strong, very lightweight product at the end of it. Um, so that's one of we're one of only one or two businesses in the UK with that capability at the moment. Uh, near Bedford Cambridge Way, we have our fac electronics facility. Um, they supply both electronics for our galley and seating products, but also um, power supplies and control systems for military applications. Uh, we have a composites facility down the other side of Bristol. Um, they do all sorts of things from um, parts for space satellites, helicopter seating, prosthetic feet, um, but their prime business is to supply us with the panels um, for our seats and for the galley product. So things like the, the doors for a galley product are very complex because they have to prevent heat loss and microwave escapes and all those kind of things. So complex products and complex materials used to ensure that they meet the requirements um, that we have for them. OK, so I said we're based in Aviation Way. Uh, the main picture there is a um, depiction of the um, six buildings that we have in Aviation Way at the moment. A couple of them are now a little bit empty um, because we've developed a new facility in the new airport business park just off of Cherry Orchard Way. Um, that facility now is built and we've moved in. Um, and um, all of our component manufacturing facilities are now based within this new building. Um, purpose built for us, um, very sleek, very stylish, very modern. Um, really quite a different way of working for IPCO um, and um, it's been very enjoyable to get settled in. Now I haven't shown this picture, next picture to many people. Um, this isn't the completed shop floor, um, but this was well into the in install and the moving of all our machines. Um, so this is the new machine hall for the new building. Um, that enables us to complete all of our manufacturing facilities in, in one building, improving our efficiency uh, and reducing our cost. We've also installed in that building a new surface treatment plant um, that enables us to treat all of our products in-house, whereas before we were having to send them down to Devon to be treated and then sent back to us, we've now got a robotic line within that building just in the top right hand corner from where that picture was taken um, that enables us to treat or surface treat all of our products in house. So what type of company is IPCO? Well, IPCO is a family owned and family run business that keeps that family feel about it throughout all aspects. It enables us to value our long term relationships we have with customers and suppliers, but most importantly, it enables us to keep our employees 
employed for long periods of time. As I mentioned, I've been with IPCO 22 years. There are people that have been here a lot longer than me. Um, there are those that have been here 35, 40 years. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a one of those rare companies where you can join and you can have a job for the long term if you um, put in the right effort and have the right attitude. We continue to promote a culture of innovation and process improvement. It, our, our, one of our big drives is all about continuous improvement and how do we constantly drive efficiency and cost reduction and, and improvement in the way we work. It also allows us to invest in our infrastructure, our technology um, and our employees. And one of the key elements of this is our training centre. So we, in 2005, established our own training facility within the business. Um, a dedicated facility with an experienced team, um, accredited to deliver our own qualifications in-house. And what we tried to do is build a scheme that would meet the requirements of our industry, but also enable young people to come into IPCO and be able to build their career around their strengths and their interests. So it's no longer an apprenticeship, but we feel it's more than an apprenticeship because it offers a greater range of specialist areas within the business that you can diversify into and also a greater level of flexibility and, and opportunity to, to drive that career of yours forward. There are other ways into IPCO. Um, I joined the business as a stores person. I've worked through the business. Um, I was IT manager for the whole group for 10 years, uh, logistics manager for the group for five years, and now I'm helping to manage the training schemes. So great flexibility for joining from the bottom and working your way up. You can go away, you could get qualified, get your degree, get whatever qualifications and industry experience, and then come back as a specialist expert in a particular field. Um, but most of our recruitment nowadays is done through our training scheme. So it's bringing young people in, building their careers and then allowing them to move on throughout the business and progress through the business. So much so that we have some of our most senior uh, managers now, uh, vice presidents and general managers, uh, ex-apprentices that have been through the training scheme and have ended up doing very well for themselves. We also have those that are subject experts and specialists in certain fields. So the, the training scheme itself is a three year scheme from September. It used to be four, but we've just reduced it to three because we believe we can deliver it more effectively in three years and enable people to get out into the business and really pushing on in their careers quicker. So it starts with an induction, hand bench fitting skills in our workshop, uh, manual machining, some CAD training, and then on CNC machining in that first year. You do two qualifications through that first year, a level two performing engineering operations and a level three technical certificate in engineering technologies. The second year is when you really learn what IPCO is all about. You go out and experience as many different departments around the business as you possibly can. And coming back to the training center to investigate new technologies and do some research. And we're currently looking at how we then formulate a, a qualification around that. Then in your third year, you choose which place, we choose between us which placement you end up in around the business. That can be anything from running, uh, setting and running a machine to design, to finance, to IT, to production control, to purchasing, um, programming, all sorts of various aspects of the business that will welcome young people through the scheme. And you do your level three MVQ in a specific subject related to that placement. Entry requirements for the scheme. It's open to all applicants age 16 or over. We've had from age 16 up to age 40 plus apply and join the scheme successfully. Um, you need a, a maths and English GCSE at four or above, preferably science as well. Um, IT is a, a wish list for us. We recognise not too many schools actually deliver an IT qualification now. Um, that actually meets the requirements of our qualifications so we can deliver that in house. That's not a problem. But most of all, what we want is people with that drive and that attitude to learn new skills 
have a genuine interest in engineering and really want to push forward and, and, and learn something new. In the first year of the scheme, these are some of the things that you can look to be manufacturing. Some will be very familiar as very typical um, apprenticeship type um, products. Some like the engine block are a little bit more intricate and a little bit more interesting. And that engine block is something you would produce in the first year of the scheme here at IPCO. That's all I have for you this morning. Whistle stop tour of IPCO and our training scheme. Thank you for listening and um, open the floor to questions. Thank you for that, Andrew. That was very interesting to hear what IPCO gets up to in a bit more detail. I just while, because there's a delay on the question, so I just had one. Is there, obviously you've got sites around the world, you said about America, is there actually opportunity to travel in your role? Uh, it would depend on where in the business you end up sitting. So we have an apprentice at the moment or a trainee that's um, sitting in our customer support team. Um, that goes and travel well when they're allowed goes and travels um, to various sites and resolves technical issues with our products in the field and obviously our sales and marketing teams and our business development teams which have ex trainees and apprenticeship apprentices in them also do that level of traveling if you're running a machine the likelihood of you getting to travel abroad is quite slim it just depends what role you end up in yeah. thank you I've also got another question, um, Andrew, and you kind of already did cover this, but are there opportunities to progress a career in IPCO and really what makes someone stand out um, so that they go on and progress throughout the company? OK, um, so really what we're looking for is people with that, that can do attitude, that drive to really succeed, um, willing to put the effort in, willing to be the one that's prepared to stand up and make a stand for what they believe in. Um, but ultimately, someone that's prepared to put the hard work in um, and, and, you know, get noticed for the right reasons rather than the wrong reasons is always going to be the people that progress. I know it's a bit of a woolly response, but it kind of, you know, it depends where you are in the business as to what people look out for in terms of skills. Really, it's all about the attitude. Um, Andrew, I've got a question. Um, what changes have you noticed since you've been working for IPCO with all maybe like techno technological advances and everything? OK, so. Um, when I joined IPCO, there were 200 employees. There's now seven, 800 employees. So ultimately, the business has grown in a big scale. Um, in that time, we've implemented um, a multi-million pound computer system called SAP. Um, which has drastically changed the way we do business. Um, the machines have got not necessarily bigger, but they've become much more advanced. There's been lots of investment in up to date modern machinery, um, which enables us to do what we do a lot more efficiently. Um, of the, you know, when I first joined, all the machines would have been programmed live online very little programming offline. Now most of them are all programmed offline and then run in real time. Um, so yeah, lots of little things, you know, as a business you progress it, it generally, you know, th there's lots of changes in the way that you move things around the business, the way, you know, people interact and the way systems interact with each other. Um, but technologically wise, the biggest change is the, the, the advanced nature of the machinery. One more from me, um, if there isn't questions coming through from the tutor groups this morning, but please feel free to pop them in, is what are some of the most exciting jobs in your opinion in IPCO? Oh, that's a very hard one. Because that just depends on you as a person. You know, what I might find exciting and interesting, other people might not. Um, I find my job one of the most rewarding because I get to see people develop and reach their potential. But um, I guess as a young person wanting to join and interest in engineering, it's either going to be 
um, operating some of the biggest machines of their type in the UK in some of our new Mazak 8800 machining centres. Um, or it's going to be how do I realise a design and push it through the business to see it manufactured. Um, for other people, it might be, well, what savings and what improvements can I find in a particular process or product to make it easier to manufacture or or quicker to flow through the business? It just depends on where your where your interests lie. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, no more questions are coming through at the moment. Mm -hmm. Just to let all the tutor groups know that these will be recorded so students who haven't been able to attend can review these again later in the week. We'll get it up on the Hub website that people can access. So again, Andrew, thank you very much. And if no more questions, we'll, we'll close end the show now. Thank you very much.